Okay. So um, I know that uh, um, in the last video, we talked about the uh, red forest. Um, now, when I was starting to um, experiment with different uh, features and different um, uh, frame and overlap duration uh, for the random forest, I figured um, it was very inefficient to load the, to frame the audio and um, extract the uh, features. Uh, since we have quite a number of features, extract the features every time in every single model. Um, and um, as you can see, I plan to do um, a, quite a few different models here. So I uh, decided that I am going to extract the framed audio and the features and save them to uh, my disk, which is my Google Drive here. Um, and so that every time I need to run a model, I can just directly reload the features, um, or if I need to extract different features, I can just reload the framed audio because, uh, it, you know, to get the framed audio and then features, sometimes it can take to up to like um, half hour, depending on, I guess, your internet speed. But uh, for me, sometimes it takes like half hour, 45 minutes. And to do that in every single, for every single model, it's going to be very inefficient. So um, in this video, I'm going to talk about what I did to uh, essentially extract the framed audios and um, extract the features and labels and save them um, to my Google Drive. Uh, before I dive deep into the uh, details, I am just going to uh, take a look at my project folder where um, I already extracted the CSV, which has the framed audio and the features um, uh, folder. So this is going to be what the end product would look like. Uh, I'm not going to uh, code in this video. I'm just going to walk oh, uh, walk through the, the notebooks that I did to extract all these pickle files. And I will also um, go over the notebook that I did for um, kind of how to use these files um, to create a model. OK. So to get started, um, this is the notebook that I used to extract the framed audios that produces all the files in this folder, uh, which are the um, they're in pickle format. And um, uh, these are the basically the data frame. If you remember, our original CSV file had like the, all the different columns. And then um, and then once we use the framed class, which was discussed discussed in one of the earlier videos, uh, we can get another column added, which is the framed audio, uh, which are in the tensor object format. So these are essentially uh, that data frame uh, with all the different columns, including the framed column, um, saved to a pickle format for reloading. Okay, so this is the notebook that uh, extracted all those um, pickle files. And uh, so here I'm using the pickle library to do that. Um, and I just want to discuss real quick um, why I didn't save it to a CSV format, because uh, in the past we've been working with the CSV format. If we remember um, every time when we um, did uh, cleaned the CSV file um, or did EDA or uh, did the train test split and the train validation split, um, for the CSV file, I always just saved to a CSV format. But then for uh, the framed audio, now that we added the framed audio column, uh, I can no longer save it to a CSV format because once because the column is in um, the tensor object format, and if I save it to CSV, um, the when I reload it to a panda data frame, it wouldn't be usable, or it's going to be very difficult to parse. So um, I'm using I'm saving it to a pickle format, and I will show you real soon um, how to save it to pickle and then how to reload it. And I, for each of the notebook that I did to extract the different framed. Um, duration and hop duration and whether to augment or not. Um, for each of the pickle file that I extracted, I also um, reload them in the same notebook so that I can confirm that the uh, data frame after being reloaded um, is the same data frame that's extracted using the framed class. OK. So uh, as always, we first import libraries. And um, here's the framed class that uh, I went over in one of the earlier videos um, where we basically feed in the data frame, which is the original uh, CSV file um, that's uh, being read into a pandas data frame. 
and then uh, we can specify the window size or half size and uh, whether to augment. And this is uh, the class that uh, will spit out the training data frame and the validation data frame uh, with the um, additional column of uh, uh, framed audio column. Okay. If you're not familiar with the, this class, uh, you know, I think it would be a good idea to uh, watch one of the, the earlier video. Uh, I will include the link uh, in the description. Um, and uh, yeah, you can get a better idea of what this class is doing because the, the class is quite big. Okay. So uh, the first step is I load the CSV file. Uh, this is the CSV file that was um, cleaned in one of the earlier videos. And uh, we include another column, which is uh, the to specify whether it's the training set or the validation set. Uh, again, we're only working with the training data for now. Um, not touching the test data yet because we don't have a model to test to run the inference on the data yet. So right now we're just prepping, uh, prepping the data for training. Okay, so I take a look at the um, how many rows there are. We have around 1,000 rows. Um, and then I just want to make sure that there's no uh, samples with less than five seconds in duration. Um, this is just a, a check for myself. The, and if there is any samples that's less than five seconds in duration, which there isn't any, um, I would just drop them. Uh, just for simplicity's sake, you can also apply uh, some kind of time stretching mechanism to um, stretch the audio to be more than five seconds. Um, since here we don't have any, uh, I'm just going to skip over this. And then we call the framed class by passing in the CSV data frame. Um, and then we specify the window size, half size, and whether to augment. Okay, and then, so this is gonna give me the framed class object uh, from which I can uh, get the uh, train data frame uh, and the uh, validation data frame. So the train data frame, so this is the first five rows of the train data frame. Uh, and you can see here, uh, the, the class added a new column. Originally, we only had these columns here and then at set. Now we have uh, another column after set is uh, framed. And this frame, you can see it's a tensor object. And um, essentially for each audio, for example, 17 seconds, it's going to look at the audio and extract the first five seconds, since my window size is five, and then jump to 0.5 seconds, and then extract the next five seconds uh, until we are at the end of the audio. And it's going to store them in um, uh, this uh, tensor object. Uh, this is the list of uh, all the uh, audio arrays each of five second in duration. Okay, so this is where I uh, save the data frame to uh, a pickle format. So this is a file path and I just say with open this file. So you, you'd wanna make sure that this is a file name that you want to save this, uh, this data framing. So uh, with open um, and with the right access, I open this as a file and then I use pickle.dump um, this is one of the method in Pickle that's uh, going to save this basically this data frame to uh, this file, which is the train df five second dot pickle file, and um, this takes uh, quite a few uh, minutes because our data frame is quite big uh, because we have the framed uh, column which is uh, actually quite large. So to save memory, uh, I do delete file. You don't, you don't really have to, but um, um, yeah, to kind of save memory, just in case uh, I do delete file to delete this file. So using the with method here, uh, I don't need to explicitly close the file. Uh, it's going to close the file automatically. Okay, so once this has been saved, so once this is wrong, uh, it's, go, it, it's saving the data frame into this pickle uh, file in this folder, right? The train while CSV pickle folder. And uh, it will be this file right here, train df five second pickle. And then I just reload it as a loaded train df. So the reason I reload it is, um, you know, just as a sanity check to make sure that the uh, data frame was saved correctly and I can reload it. So I reload it here and here's just a quick visual inspection. And we can see that, uh, you know, it, it, looks, it looks good, right? So we have all the columns and and the first five rows certainly looks the same as the original data frame. And so here I specify the columns. Uh, so here is all the columns except for the framed column. The reason is because since the framed is a tensor object, 
I cannot just directly use um, the pandas.equals method to compare um, the data frame. So uh, I can compare everything up until frame. And then for the framed column, I'm going to have to compare separately. So here I just compare the frames train DF, which is original data frame, uh, and compare against the loaded train DF, which is the data frame that's loaded using the pickle format. Um, and then to uh, this is the pandas.equals method. Uh, basically, what does the first data frame equal the second data frame? And this is, I'm running an assertion to saying, OK, if it's equal, then it's OK. If it's not, then raise an assertion error. So here you can see there's no assertion error, and this was wrong successfully. So we know for sure that to, at least up until the framed column, um, the original, the pickle loaded data frame is the same as the original data frame. OK, so now, since uh, I already mentioned the tensor object cannot be directly compared using this uh, pd.equals, uh, which is this method. Um, so I have to compare them line by line. And essentially what I'm doing here is I'm initiating a count where I can count how many rows, how many instances that are different. OK, so I um, use a for loop here. The length is uh, basically the how many rows, right? So uh, the training data frame has uh, however many rows it's going to iterate through. And for um, each of the rows, I'm going to say, um, this is a little bit hard to look at, but I'm going to look at from uh, from the middle out. So what's the uh, the tf.equal? So this is saying, hey, uh, this is a TensorFlow uh, method that compares two tensor objects. Okay. So this is saying, hey, does this first tensor object uh, equal to the second tensor object? Right. So the first tensor object, if you look at it, is the framed dot chain df, which is the original data frame. And I'm indexing a framed column, OK? And the dot I lock, this is saying, OK, uh, for example, the first row and the second row and the third row. So for each row, essentially this, this bit right here, the framed. So for each row, I'm saying, OK, does this bit uh, equal to the loaded chain data frame? So the data frame that's loaded using a pickle format, does this, uh, this bit framed on the first row equal to the framed on the first row? from the loaded train data frame, OK? So uh, this is going to return, uh, if everything is equal, it's going to return um, a list of uh, NumPy array of whether uh, of true and false, OK? So then I use the NumPy.any method to say, OK, this is, if anything is, if there is any, just even one instance, it doesn't equal, then this is going to return false, OK? So it's saying, hey, something in there doesn't equal. And so otherwise, this is going to be true, right? So this is saying, if not true, basically, essentially, it falls. So if there's anything that doesn't equal, count um, add one. OK, so this is just counting how many instances there are not equal. And at the end, I assert that the count should be equal to 0, because they should all be equal. And you can see here, I'm not the, the it didn't throw an assertion error. Everything is good. So I confirmed that the train original train data frame and the reloaded pickle data frame are the same thing. And I just do the same thing for the validation. Okay, so so I load the validation data frame and then I save it to pickle. I reload using pickle and then I compare. And again, I do the assertion to make sure that uh, there the original data frame, the original validation data frame equal is the same as the reloaded validation data frame. OK, so I repeat this notebook uh, various times. Each time, I change the window size and the half size, and whether to augment or not. And on my website, I actually listed out what I did. So basically, we have the 5 second frame with 2.5 second overlap with augmentation and without augmentation, OK? So these are the, so we have the train data frame five second with, uh, with augmentation, without augmentation, and then the validation five second. Uh, again, remember the augmentations only apply to the training. So the validation set is um, the same whether there is or without augmentation. So uh, the training would have uh, with augmentation or without augmentation, but validation is just the same. And then we have the eight second with four second overlap. Um, 
so again, the same with uh, with augmentation, without augmentation for chain, and then validation is just with, without augmentation. Okay, so this created uh, how many? There are six six um, pickle format uh, data frames that contains the framed column, uh, which con which consists of the framed audios, each of the specified uh, uh, window size, right? Either five second or eight second, and uh, it could be uh, augmented or not augmented. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to move on to uh, extracting the features. So uh, once we have the, this uh, data frame, this data frame saved, we can uh, use the framed column to extract the features for each of the five second instance, right? Okay. So in the five second, this is the five second audio features average pooled. Uh, this is the notebook that I use to extract the features for uh, from this uh, five second data frame. Okay. So again, um, the, uh, we, we've already seen this before. Um, basically, we uh, do the free for pre processing, we do a label encoder, I mean, max scalar, and then well, again, we use pickle to save the um, features and labels to disk. Okay. So when we save it, I save it to this chain val features pickle folder. And you can see here, I saved quite a number of them. And uh, I'm going to just go over one of them, which is the train valve five second audio features average pool, and uh, which is this uh, notebook right here. So uh, again, to extract the features, we're using the extraction class, which was uh, I went over them in one of the earlier videos. Um, and so essentially, this extraction class takes in the training data frame and the validation data frame as inputs. And you can specify the sample rate, the number of MSCC, mouse spectrogram, chroma, and the features that you want to extract and whether to normalize uh, an average pool. So um, when we're working with the uh, machine learning models, uh, when we have multiple features of uh, a varying range of uh, values, uh, it's always a good idea to do normalization or standardization so that uh, the for each feature the variance is uh, is a set value. For example, here I use the min max scalar to squeeze all the values between zero and one, uh, and I discussed this in one of the earlier videos as well. Basically, uh, if you don't do this, if there is one feature that has you know number from say zero to a million, and then another feature that number is from zero to one, then uh, when you do the learning the feature with the large value is going to become uh, uh, dom do dominant in the uh, model learning process, right? Because every time when the model is is looking at different features, it's like saying, oh, hey, look, this feature has a really large number and, and it seems very important. Uh, whereas another feature that doesn't have such a large number, it seems like it's not as important. So uh, we just want to do normalize so that each feature is um, uh, have the same uh, variance. Um, that's uh, controlled and then uh, they can contribute equally to the model learning process. Okay, uh, again, I'm not gonna go over this uh, class uh, in detail. Uh, you can feel free to watch one of the earlier videos. Again, this class is quite big as you can see here. Uh, so uh, yeah, definitely watch the video if, if, if you are not sure what this uh, extraction class is doing. Okay, so uh, remember we use the, uh, we use the five second uh, notebook here and saved the data frame, this data frame uh, for training and validation into the pickle format. And here I'm just using the pickle to reload this data, uh, this data frame. And again, this should look very familiar. This is the training and the validation. Okay, and then so to extract the features, I just specify the feature list. So uh, I extracted the audio features and the non-audio features separately so that I can um, feed, uh, I can reload them into the model uh, separately if needed. So essentially here I have the uh, audio features and um, I pass in a training data frame, validation data frame, the features list. And for this notebook, I'm doing yes, normalize. We, we always normalize. And then for this notebook, I'm saying yes, do average pool. And you can see here, this one took 18 minutes. Sometimes it could take even longer, okay. Uh, and we should all be familiar with this already. This was covered in the um, uh, random forest notebook. And 
uh, I know the video sequence is kind of messed up now, but uh, yeah, basically this is covered in the uh, Random Forest Notebook. Take a look at the Random Forest Notebook if um, if uh, you're not familiar with this. Basically, we're looking at the training label and then taking a look at the training features. And um, the, fe the features.training features is the dictionary of all the features. And here we're just looking at each of the training features. Okay, same with the validation. And then we use the um, label encoder from scikit-learn to encode the classes because um, the classes are, um, uh, you know, Barswa, Comsen, and Yuag Wang. And uh, especially when we feed this into a neural net um, in TensorFlow, it's going to expect the class labels to be numerical uh, instead of um, uh, strings. So uh, I just do the class encoder um, so that uh, everything is consistent. And uh, essentially, uh, Barswa is zero, and consent is one, and Ewag one is uh, two, uh, encoded two. And we can see here, this is uh, me taking a look. Okay. And uh, here is, uh, I'm preparing the, uh, I'm preparing the features and labels to be saved to a pickle format. So this is a little bit confusing because I'm calling this dictionary features, but then it also has a label. So, um, this is just me being lazy instead of creating another dictionary and put the features in and then putting the label in. I'm just reusing this uh, features dictionary. Okay, so we're in the features dictionary, we already have all the features. And then I'm just cre creating another key value pair, which is uh, the keys label. And then the value is the training label. And you can see it's at the bottom here, the same for validation. So now uh, we have the training features dictionary containing all the training features and the label and the validation um, features dictionary containing all the features and the label. And I just want to merge them into one big dictionary, which is going to be essentially a nested dictionary where I have a, within the merge dictionary, I have two keys. One is train and another one is val. And then in the train uh, value, the key value pair, right? The train, the train key. Uh, the value that's corresponding to a train key is going to be a dictionary containing the feature and the labels for the training data. And then uh, for the value that's corresponding to the validation uh, key is going to be the um, dictionary of uh, uh, validation features and validation labels. Okay. Now that the, uh, the, we have this big dictionary with the training and the validation data saved, um, to a dictionary, I'm going to save it into this pickle format. So again, this is similar to what we did when we extract, when we save the data frame. The only difference is uh, I'm just saving it to a different folder. And uh, I'm saving it to train val five sec, uh, audio features average pulled because I average pulled and that we only have the audio features. And this is, I loaded the five second uh, data frame, right uh, at the beginning. So. Uh, I'm I'm saving it to to my local disk and then I'm reloading it. Uh, the reason I want to reload it is because so that I can compare the original dictionary and the reloaded dictionary to make sure that they're the same thing. So uh, let's go over this a uh, bit real real quick. Essentially, first I'm asserting that the keys are the same. So remember, we should have two keys, two top level keys, which um, is chain and val. And here the assertion didn't throw an error, so we're good. And then I'm uh, iterating through both of the keys, right? So the keys, again, are chain and val. So I'm saying, uh, hey, take a look at indexing into the chain, uh, each of the top level key, which is chain val, val for example. Uh, take a look at the chain um, value, which uh, take a look at the value that corresponds to the train, the, uh, train key and uh, get all the keys. Uh, what are the keys? These should be uh, the feature and the label. So MFCC, uh, Chroma, RMS, spectrocentrate, male spectrogram, and label. So these are the keys. So it's saying, hey, do the keys from the original dictionary agree with the keys uh, from the um, reloaded dictionary and asserting? So it didn't throw an error. This was okay. And then uh, I loop through the bottom level keys. So what's the bottom level keys? The bottom level keys are, are the uh, ones that we just talked about, the features and the labels. Uh, so the MFCC, Chroma, et cetera. So look through each of them and um, take a look at the shape 
for each of the, uh, so this is indexing into the key to get the value. Take a look at the shape of the value that's corresponding to each of the key. Do, does the original data frame, uh, original dictionary, um, agree with the reloaded dictionary? Okay, and then um, each of the value within a key is an unpaired array. You can see here, for example, chroma is an array uh, uh, containing, um, you know, uh, samples of uh, like each 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 audio sample is, uh, for example, chroma is we have twelve chroma for each sample, and then if we have uh, I don't remember off the top of my head around four thousand, so we should be expecting four thousand by uh, twelve uh, dimension for the chroma, which would be the shape, right? So here is saying um, do each of the array um, that's of shape twelve do each of them agree? between the original dictionary and the uh, reloaded dictionary and assert that they agree. So here I'm using the numpy.array equal to compare the numpy arrays. Okay. So now uh, we have the uh, features and the labels saved uh, in a pickle format and it can they can be reloaded to be used at a later time. So I repeated the same process um, for five second and eight second and audio features average pooled or not average pooled. And um, the original training with augmentation or without augmentation and the non-audio features. So uh, again, on my website, I listed out all the items that uh, were all the features that was uh, extracted. Uh, the numbers in a bracket indicate the number of each feature extracted. For example, number of MFCC is 20, number of chroma is 12, et cetera. So uh, here are all the audio features, and here uh, are the continent, uh, the non-audio features. Actually, I didn't extract the null spectrogram with the 128, so I'm gonna uh, have to remove this from my website. But uh, other than that, everything else uh, should be uh, correct. Okay, so here is the list uh, of all the uh, audio features and labels extracted and ready to be used. And then now I'm going to go over how we can use them to build a model. Okay, so this is a notebook called Usage Example that shows how you can use um, the extracted features um, to run a very simple uh, random forest classifier. So um, in the random forest video, I already went through the details of uh, the random forest classifier. And in that video, I didn't use uh, this uh, the extracted features pickle format file. I just directly used um, the two class methods, the framed. So I first used the framed class method to extract the framed data frame. And then I used the extraction class method to extract the features. And then, um, and then I ran a random forest model, right? So uh, that took quite a bit of time because uh, each time we extract the features, remember each time we extract the features, it takes like at least 18 minutes and even longer if we don't do the average pooling. And then if we extract uh, non-audio features, right? So this is an example of how we can just directly use the extracted features in pickle format without having to um, re-extract the framed audio and the features each time when we run a new notebook. Okay, so uh, again, the first thing is we import libraries. We should all be familiar with this. And then uh, we load the features and labels. So uh, essentially I'm just using a pickle to reload the pickle file. That's the chain file five second audio features. Again, remember this is going to load a big di dictionary. Uh, which contains two keys. One is train and one is val. And then within two keys, the values are the corresponding dictionary for the features and labels um, for either train or val. And um, in the nested dictionary here, we have the features as keys or label uh, for the label as keys. And then uh, the values are the corresponding uh, you know, feature values. For, for the uh, related feature. Okay, so I re I loaded the audio feature and the, the non-audio feature. So this is what the non-audio feature looks like. It's uh, the same format as the audio feature. It's just uh, instead of having 
audio features such as MFCC, etc. We have non-audio features such as type, continent, and rating. And again, we have the labels in um, the audio and non-audio features, just so that we can uh, make sure that uh, the labels line up. OK, so the first thing I do is I confirm that the labels line up. Basically, I'm saying, uh, do the training labels uh, for the audio data frame line up with the training um, labels for the non-audio data frame? And then I do the same thing for the validation. I'm using an np um, uh, array equal method to compare uh, NumPy arrays because again, the labels are in array format. And then I uh, shuffle the data. Um, so uh, essentially uh, I have a method, a function here that I use to shuffle the data and um, I pass in the audio features dictionary and the non-audio features dictionary and um, this is kind of this is kind of similar to the shuffle data function that I did for the random forest. The only change is uh, I just have two uh, dictionary comprehensions to process the two dictionaries I'm passing in. Okay, so and then I return the um, shuffled uh, dictionaries for the audio features and non-audio features. So for example, here is how uh, I would shuffle the data for the training audio features and non-audio features. Um, and you can see here, I'm just taking a look. This is just a sanity check to make sure that uh, nothing looks out of ordinary. And the same thing for the non-audio. And a quick check that I uh, like to do is to make sure that the labels line up. To This is just a very quick visual check to make sure that um, you know the, the uh, indices were shuffled correctly. So um, uh, the, the labels should line up 11202 for the audio features should line up with the non-audio features, right? And then the same thing for the validation. Okay, so then I also do the one hot encode continent. This is the same process I did for the um, uh, random forest notebook. And this should say random forest. Okay. And again, the same thing as what we did for Random Forest, I just concatenate all the features into one large um, uh, training features object, which is of shape, number of uh, samples and number of features. Okay, the same with the validation. And then I just pass them into this uh, Random Forest classifier to get the training and validation accuracy. And then again, I, look, I can look at the um, uh, classification report and the uh, confusion matrix. And then I also I can also look at review the other results from all the models if I uh, you know use different combinations of features. So this is just a very quick example of how you can use the um, features that's extracted in the feature extraction uh, notebook um, in and the features in the pickup format, how you can use them in, to uh, build the machine learning model. And this is just a sample uh, example with the uh, random forest, but uh, we can follow the same logic to build many uh, other different machine learning models. And so going forward, I will be um, I will be using the features that uh, are stored in the pickle format for all the uh, machine learning models that I'm going to run. Uh, I'm going to keep the random forest model as is. Uh, so um, the random forest model, remember. Uh, as I mentioned, I directly used the two class methods. So I first do the framed to get the framed audio, and then I use the extraction class to get the features extracted. Um, and you can see here, for example, uh, yeah, so the feature extraction in this notebook itself took 15 minutes. And um, if I ha want to run random forest, so for random forest, I ran multiple different models with the different combinations of uh, um, different combinations of features and different uh, window and hop size. Uh, so by using the pickle format feature extraction and fe features extracted in an, uh, and saved in pickle format, uh, I can uh, speed up this process. But uh, for the random forest, I'm just going to leave them as is. But uh, going forward, uh, such as XGBoost and all the CNN models I'm going to run is going to be, I'm going to run them using the uh, features that's uh, saved in the pickle format. And uh, here's the, the list of the random forest models that uh, I ran. And um, uh, 
yeah, feel free to look at um, look at my website to see the discussion of um, the random forest models and uh, the conclusions that uh, I drew from the model. Um, yeah, so that's it for this video. And uh, I will um, go over the um, XGBoost next um, for the ensemble method, the second ensemble method. The first one is random forest. So I will go over the XGBoost next. And uh, yeah, I um, hope we can see you again next time.